Hey, it's Ronnie, and I'm over here right next to the Grand Canyon. I'm not at the Grand Canyon yet, um, but I'm right here next to it. Beautiful view. I stopped by. Just wanted to kind of give you a view and kind of the, the stuff that I do. One of my favorite things that I like to do is just go driving through the desert. I live in Nevada now because the tax was so crazy in California that I was like, you know what? I'm going to go live in Nevada and... I'm so grateful I did because here I am on the open road on my way to the Grand Canyon right now and that leads me into something I wanted to talk to you about today which is freedom. Um, I think that a lot of people um, are chasing after money when they actually really what they're looking for is freedom. So freedom is defined to me, I can only speak from my own personal experience, but everyone's a little bit different. Uh, freedom to me is the ability to go, for example, move from Nevada to California because the taxes are too high. Or the ability to go just hang out over here in the Grand Canyon because I want to, or to drive my car through the desert because I think it's cool. Um, and not be able to, or, or to be able to do anything I want uh, to pit and, and not have anyone to, 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 to tell me what I can and can't do, like a typical job, right? So that's freedom to me, and everyone has their own definition of freedom. Maybe yours is surfing on the beach. Um, maybe yours is traveling the world, which I I like to do as well. Uh, maybe your freedom is just to be able to stay at home with your kids and to be able to uh, spend the quality time with your kids as they grow up. And so everyone has a definition of freedom. But the thing is that you don't have to have one or the other. So a lot of people think, well, if I'm going to have the freedom, then I have to sacrifice money. I have to make less money. And I always tell people, look, you can have your cake and eat it too. So there's this phrase, and I don't know where this phrase came from. I'm sure it has some meaning, but uh, when I think about it, it's one of these dangerous phrases that Americans say that gives them self-limiting belief. So one of that those phrases is, uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And the more I started to think about it, the more I was like, what does that even mean? You can't have your cake and eat it too. When I buy a cake, I have it and I eat it. That's that's how it works, you know? And I know what it's implying, which is what you eat it is gone. But that's limiting beliefs. See, that's that, those are these phrases that just creep into our lives that keep us from living the lives that we want. So we can't have our cake and eat it too. So going back to freedom and money. A lot of people think, well, if I'm going to have freedom, then I have to sacrifice a certain amount of stability in my life and a certain amount of money. And I want to tell you right now that that's not the case. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Once you gain more freedom, once you break yourself away from that cycle of a job or of a, of a nine to five or working for somebody where you're beholden to that paycheck, actually, you have more freedom if you do it the right way and more stability rather. And that's the most important thing for a lot of people. They say, well, you know, freedom is great, but I need stability. I got a family. I have my parents who are getting older. I have this. I have a mortgage. I got a car. I have this, this, and that. And I always tell, look, you can have all of those things. In fact, I have a lot of those things. I don't have kids, but I have, you know, expenses as well. I'm not trying to just go live out in, you know, my RV for the rest of my life. You know, I want to have the nice things and I want to be able to travel and I want to be able to provide for my family. Um, I'd, I've never thought those were mutually exclusive concepts. So I want to tell you right now there's a little bit, in fact, when you gain the freedom, when you're able to break free from that cycle, you have more options. So now you're able to stack multiple income. So instead of saying, you know, I'm only stuck to this one income at a nine to five job, you know, that's all I can do because I'm stuck in this office. Now you can stack multiple incomes. You can say, well, you know, I can sell stuff on eBay. I can do some affiliate marketing. I can do some consulting on the side. And, you know, I can do some environmental stuff that I'm really into. You know, so that's what I'm saying. When you actually free up your time, you're able to have more stability. And to me, by stability, that means having multiple streams of income. And they say the average multimillionaire, and I still don't know who, when I say they, I'm just saying they. I, I've heard this out in the interwebs, but, and I believe it. This is what I make a list, six multiple streams of income. Um, and that's really what I believe stable is. And if you're working a nine to five job where you have to show up to work and that's your whole day, maybe you could have one extra stream on the side on the, you know, at weekends. But you know it's hard to make six streams of income, and so actually, when you're working, that's when you have a job. When you have a nine to five job, you're actually in a less stable position. So what I found is when people say you can't have your cake and eat it too, when it comes to freedom and stability, I found this, these very people are in the most unstable positions because they're relying. If their if their job were to lay them off, 
they would be out of money. They would have no options where somebody who's gained that freedom, created a lifestyle business where they've been able to work from home and gain that freedom, they've now stacked three, four, five, six streams of income because they have the freedom to be able to do that. Because actually they say that the average person when, and again, they, and I'm paraphrasing, and I'm sure you can find this online to back up my uh, paraphrase claims, but the average person works maybe three, three hours a day, actual work. So they're going eight hours a day and work three hours a day. Now imagine if you had multiple online businesses where you can say, I'm gonna work three hours in this business, three hours in this business, that's six hours of work, then I'm gonna spend the rest of the time with my, my, my with my with my family so that's multiple that's two streams of income that you've made there and you're still spending less time than you did when you went or in a nine to five office so you see what i'm saying so get rid of that mentality that stability because that stability is that that's a lie that we've been told that's that a job is somehow stable because the fact is most of you guys watching this are going to be automated at some point okay your robots are going to take your job artificial intelligence so Stability is a fallacy. Stability is a fugazi. It's it's, a, it's 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 something where we tell ourselves to feel better and to sleep well at night. The people that feel the most stable are entrepreneurs that have multiple streams of income and are able to know that if one of them goes out, it's okay because they have three, four, five, six plus other streams of income. So I just want to leave you with this. Rethink what you think stability is. Rethink what you think freedom is, and go for what you know is within your means to do it because life is too short to get rich slow.